What's up, freaks? This is Steve Says, episode number 89. I want you to take a look at this here. This little, we're on several different cameras and phones here, Instagrams, Facebooks, all that stuff. So I want to show you this, that we're going to, it's going to, this is going to be a, a huge part of today, what we're, what we're talking about today, today's discussion, which we'll get to in a second. Characters, actions, and reactions. Remember that. From Tyson's fourth grade study program. We'll get into that in a second. I'll give you a chance to log in here while we do our little introduction. So this is Steve Says, episode number 89. Today we're talking about, are you living life as an imposter? So let's talk about that. And as you know on Steve Says, this is always about not what you necessarily want to hear, but what you need to hear because some people will hate, but I know most of you can relate. We are bringing the freaking fire every second of every second. Today we're going to be talking about, are you living life on your own terms or someone else's? Are you conforming to what society wants you to be or anyone else wants you to be other than your freaking self? Then we're talking about, are you marching to the beat of your own drum? Your own authentic drum, authenticity. We're going to talk about that and do a deep dive into authenticity because that's the kind of cool word out there on the internet nowadays. So this is episode number 89. As you know, Steve Says is a live show on how to have a no excuses, badass mindset guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles preventing your success in your health, your family, your finances, so that you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own freaking terms. We're focusing on the mind, the body, and also your business, your personal relationships, your family. It's all about having a role model mindset, how to operate to dominate with discipline, energy, confidence, action, and being your freak self. That's what this is all about. And I'm wearing one of my favorite t-shirts today. Funny thing is, the, the midge, the kids bought me this shirt. It says, you can't see, it's, it's backwards on the, the Facebooks and the Instagrams and all that other crap. It says, husband, daddy, protector, hero. And I think that's kind of fitting for today's episode, which is on authenticity, which is on being your freak self, who you are, what you stand for, and the imposters that are out there. And again, if you weren't here when we just got started, we're going to be taking a deep, this is going to be a huge part of today's discussion, this fourth graders, characters, actions, and reactions. We're going to do a deep dive into that as we get rolling. So if you have any questions, comments, put them down below. Make sure to like, comment, and share this video with all your friends, your family members, your coworkers, and your freaking enemies. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. On all over the internet, one of the cool words nowadays, and again, the question I asked in the beginning, in case you missed it, was, are you living the life of an imposter? Ask yourself that serious question. You know, we always like to start with a question. Are you living your life as an imposter? Are you living life on your own terms? Are you conforming what society wants you to be, not what you necessarily want to be yourself? And then are you marching to the beat of your own authentic drum? So the word of the day is going to be authenticity and transparency. And we're going to break those up. And, and also discussing frauds and hypocrites. Think, think about... I'm, I'm, we're going to start, I think, with this magazine. Because think about some of the things that are out there, right? I tend to have some, la- whatever, language that, that some people might not like. Might not, uh, they think they don't like, they pretend they don't like, but it's a shit you need to fucking hear, okay? That's the way that I like to get the message across. Yeah, it might be direct. It might be a little abrasive, or whatever the fuck term you want to use. It, it, all the internet terms out there, abrasive. You're being very abrasive, like... But let's, let me think about, let's think about movies, right? Let's think about some movies. The movie Ted. Have you ever seen the movie Ted or Ted Part 2? It's about a fucking bear that comes to life and he does a whole bunch of drugs and cocaine and doing all kinds of things with women and all this other stuff. It's a sick, twisted movie. But then you think about it, who's in those movies? There's, there's just a list of high level actors, Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg and Morgan Freeman's, I think, in Ed Part 2. A bunch of people are in Ed, or Ted Part One, then other movies. Let's think of other movies, more violent movies. You ever see From Dusk Till Dawn? That's just a 
a, a, a long laundry list of high level actors, and this movie's 20, 20 years old, 30 years old, probably 90s, 98 maybe. From Dusk Till Dawn. You ever seen that movie? We just watched that last night. So it just popped in my head. It actually made me think of this topic today for Steve Says. Or The Purge, the series of The Purge. There's three movies of The Purge. Actually, no, four movies of The Purge. We love The Purge, by the way. So it's a, what an awesome movie. What an awesome movie. So The Purge, right? Hunger Games. Deadpool. Like, think of how sick and fucking twisted these movies are. But there's such high-level actors in these movies that are getting paid millions of fucking dollars to say these sick, twisted, demented things. Do these sick, twisted, demented things. A bear fucking with these women and all this other stuff. Or Anchorman. Harrison Ford was in Anchorman 2. Anchorman had like a, a another list of just A-list actors that are like the top of the top when it comes to Hollywood and all that other shit. Think about the series The Walking Dead. How gruesome and violent and vicious The Walking Dead is. And these are the top shows. These are top movies. These are million dollar box office fucking hits that people love and watch. Let's go into actors. Some of the actors in some of these movies. Think of the, the, of rappers like Ice Cube, Ice T. Think about those two. Ice Cube was in NWA when I was growing up as a kid. They're talking about all kinds of, you know, shit with the cops and drugs and gangs and women and all this violence and all this craziness and whatever else. And now he's, uh, you know, been in so many movies, been in kids movies, family movies. Think about, think about Ice-T. Had a a song called Cop Killer and now he's got, he had a role on Law and Order, the TV show, for like 20 years as a, as a cop. Like, think about it. He wrote a song, Cop Killer, he's becoming a cop, like, Shit's not that sick and twisted as you think. It's what's in the human mind. The human mind is just naturally sick and twisted. That's in our fucking DNA. So when I act the way I act or talk the way I talk or have the approach I have, anyone that's, oh my God, that's that's horrible. That's not the way it is. You're too straightforward. You curse too much. Say the fuck word too much. Fuck that. You know, who's The Rock, think of The Rock too in wrestling and now he's the biggest movie star in the world. But I think the ultimate example is Howard Stern. Think about how... Look at Howard Stern's career. Well, the biggest radio personality started off on just regular local radio, started off small time, worked his way up, hustled, but he would just talk about sick, twisted shit, uh, offending everyone. He had some people do some, a uh, man and a woman do some, some shit live on the radio, I think in like the St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City that got him banned from one station. And what did that lead him to? It led him to the, be the fucking host on America's Got Talent, which is like a family show. No violence, no no cursing, whatever. So being so sick and twisted got all these individuals high level roles. So it's like people can relate to that shit. And it's not really that offensive because everyone has those fucking thoughts. So that's why I say on Steve says some people can hate, but most can relate. It's because when you when you say, oh my God, that that, that language is horrible, or you're you're saying stuff that's offensive, you're full of fucking shit and you're being a fraud. And, and, and the history shows it. The numbers show it. The movies show it. All these examples that I'm giving you show it with these movies and, and TV stars and movie stars that done and said far worse shit than I've ever done or said, right? And they are now box office hits that people are paying money to go see. So it obviously can't be that fucking bad. The video games and all that other stuff. So that, that just bring, that just makes people Become fucking hypocrites when it comes down to it. Cause I, I'll get messages sometimes that, that it's, I'm too over the top and it's not that fucking over the top. Go watch some of those movies I just said. Go watch the, the, the Ted movie. Go watch Anchorman. Go watch Hunger Games. Go watch From Dusk Till Dawn. What a sick fucking twisted but awesome fucking movie that people love. Like a classic. Deadpool. The Walking Dead. The actors that I mentioned. The Rock, Ice T, Ice Cube, Howard Stern. That were abrasive, were offensive, and talked a lot of shit, cursed a lot. And look, look where they went. Because like, they were just being them fucking selves. That's what it was. They were literally just being authentic, which led them to those places where people were like, all right, I can get down with that. I can vibe with that. And they would get those roles and those jobs and those opportunities because they were literally just being them fucking selves. That's all they were doing was just being themselves. So I want to show you this and this prop we have here. Again, I'm going to show it to you. Character, what is it called? Characters, actions, and reactions. This is from Tyson's fourth grade. I think it's on page eight. I'm going to read this for you. Listen to this. Check this out. I'm going to read this for you. 
This is from Snow White Meets the Huntsman. I guess they're doing a short story reading about it and they got to take notes and talk about similes and all that other English class bull crap, right? So let's read this. What's in here? Let's, where was the section that we're going to start from? Boom, 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 boom. Drops of blood fell into the snow. The red on the white looked beautiful that she thought to herself. They're talking about red blood dripping into the snow. All right? Red blood dripping into the snow. The red on the white looked so beautiful that she thought to herself, if I only had a child as white as snow, as red as blood, as black as the wood in this frame. Soon afterward, and listen, I'm reading you a fourth grader story, but I'm gonna, there's a point here, so just stay with me for a second. Just bear with me as I read you this fourth grade story, because listen to this. Listen, just listen. I, 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 I want you to listen to this. Soon afterwards, the queen had a little daughter who was as white as snow, as red as blood, and as black as ebony wood. Therefore, they called her Little Snow White. Sadly, as soon as the child was born, the queen died. Okay, it goes on and on and on. Just wanted to build it up for you. Okay, page eight. We're going a little further into the story. Right? The queen took fright and turned yellow green with envy. From that hour on, whenever she looked at Snow White, her heart turned over inside her body. So great was her hatred for the girl. The envy and pride grew ever greater like a weed in her heart until she had no peace day and night. This is a fourth grader story. Just listen to this stuff. Then she summoned a huntsman and said to him, take Snow White out into the woods. I never want to see her again. Kill her. And as proof that she's dead, bring her lungs and her liver back to me. Bring this little girl's lungs and liver back to me. The huntsman obeyed and took Snow White into the woods. He took out his hunting knife, was about to stab her in her innocent heart when the girl began crying. Oh, dear huntsman, let me live. I will run into the wild woods and never come back. Because she was so beautiful, the huntsman took pity on her and said, Run away, poor child. He thought, The wild animals will soon devour you anyway. So he's letting her go, expecting her just to die and get eaten by the animals anyway. But still, it was as if a stone had fallen from his heart, for he would not have to kill her. So he just didn't have to do the killing of her. He's going to let the wild animals kill her. Just then, a young boar came running by. The huntsman killed it, cut out its lungs and fucking liver. It didn't say fucking. I added that in there because it's crazy. And took them back to the queen as proof of Snow White's death. The cook had to boil them with salt and the wicked wicked woman ate them, supposing that she had eaten Snow White's lungs and liver. And that's the end of the story. So this witch got the, some huntsman to go kill some little girl and wanted him to bring back her, her lungs and her liver. He didn't want to be, feel guilty for killing this little girl, so he just lets her run off in the woods uh, uh, knowing that she's just going to get eaten and chomped up and killed by these boars anyway, but at least he wouldn't be on his shoulders for killing her. Then he kills a boar and brings its lungs and liver to this wicked lady, wicked whatever, queen or witch or whatever the fuck it is, and she eats it thinking she's eating the lungs and liver of the girl. This is in a fourth grade story. What they're giving nowadays, which is like very toned down school, right? The shit they're teaching, the shit they tell the kids to do and tell the boys they can go to the bathroom in the girls' bathroom and all this other weird shit that goes on in schools nowadays. That's what they're reading. Like, I don't know if you're getting the point that I'm coming from, but the world's fucking crazy. Like, if you can't handle someone saying the, the fuck word... Or someone telling you shit straightforward like it is. You're going to get fucking devoured in the real world. Because that's what a fourth grader is learning. Movies like Ted. Movies like From Dusk Till Dawn. And and Deadpool. And all these other movies. Are box office hits. Because people like you fucking love it. It's in our human nature. We're fucking beasts. We're animals. We just have a conscience. So we know how to control that shit. So. Pardon me. For just not being a hypocrite, not being a fraud, and just being straightforward and being my real, authentic, freak, motherfucking self. Because that's what it's all about. You hear about authenticity all the time, all over the internet, all over Instagram. Being authentic and being real and all. It's all fucking ha- and 99.9999% of the time, it's a bullshit, fraud, fake motherfucker that's saying that stuff. That's who's saying that. They're being a hypocrite. 
What's a hypocrite? Well, the definition of a hypocrite is a, a person who pretends to have virtues, morals, or religious beliefs or principles that he or she does not actually possess. That's a fucking hypocrite. A person who feigns some desirable or publicly approved attitude, especially one whose private life, opinions, or statements belie his other public statements. That's a fucking hypocrite, an imposter, a phony, a fake, a stan, a trickster, a cheat, a deceiver, a fucking fraud, a pretender, a fake ass motherfucker, which is the opposite of authenticity, which is what most people who talk about authenticity are actually doing. They're being a fucking imposter. They're, they're being a hypocrite is what they're doing. There's, there's a, some quotes I want to tell you about. There's, I don't remember who said this, but better, someone said better to be known as a sinner than a hypocrite. Then there's a quote even from the Bible. And it said, why do you look at the speck that's in your brother's eye, but don't notice the log that's in your own eye? Those people that will nitpick about the little shit you're doing, they'll tell me about, oh my God, your language and this and that. You're putting on the internet, you curse in front of your kids. And meanwhile, they're the biggest fucking scumbaggery douchebags in the fucking world. That's called a hypocrite. That's called not being authentic. That's called not being transparent. That's called not being real. That's called being disgusting. Think about it. Real and authentic are people like Ice Cube, like Ice T, like the actors that agree to take those parts and those roles. Why is that pausing? One of the Instagrams is pausing. Those people that agree to agree to take those roles and those parts in those movies, those sick fucking twisted movies. Because it's just human nature. That's how we think. That's how we feel. It's people being fucking real. It's people using their imagination, their creativity, creating shit. Not just sitting on the sidelines, bitching and moaning about the people that are actually creating shit. Like, shut the fuck up. Sit down, shut the fuck up, or jump on the field and go create some shit yourself. Be your authentic, real fucking self. Not with a a, a bunch of bullshit whining and people pleasing on the side. People pleasers are fucking fake. People, people, people pleasers are frauds. They're condescending. That's what they are. Benjamin Franklin said, clean your finger before you point at my spots. Like, shut the fuck up. Most people that bitch and complain and talk about transparency and uh, fucking authenticity, they'll go and point out everyone's little things. You know what they're doing that for? To deflect the real shit that off themselves. The bullshit that they're doing. The fake bullshit lives that they're, they're, they're leading. That's what it's all about. They're just fucking condescending and, and just snobs. That's what it is. Fucking snoot nose motherfuckers. So what is transparency? What is authenticity? Transparency is not just meaning invisible. Transparency is actually the opposite of invisible. People think transparency means you can see through it, but it's not that you can see through it. You can actually see it. Transparency is very fucking visible. And transparency and real authenticity, not internet fucking authenticity, that will overcome those condescending fuckers. That will overcome the hypocrites, the frauds, the fakes, the phonies. I call it my, and I've talked about it before, I call it my eight mile theory. Where if you saw, if you saw the movie Eminem, I'm explaining how you can have this authentic, transparent, make you bulletproof pretty much. One of the Instagrams. Or pausing, whatever. How can you do that? Is I call it the eight mile theory. It's it's when it's time to step up. It's time for me to come on this video. Time for me to go go run work in the project. Time for me to speak in front of a, of a, a group, an audience. I tell myself when it's time to step up. I just tell myself I am fucking awesome. That's it. I am fucking awesome. Stop making excuses. Don't be a little bitch. Fucking kill this. Attack this. Straightforward. Head on. That's what it's about. So in the eight mile theory that I that I talk about is. If you've ever seen the movie Eight Mile, you know Eminem. He has that, that big rap battle at the end, right? Where he chooses to go first. What does he do? He talks about all the shit about himself. Pull, full transparency. That's transparency. Where it's very visible. It's not invisible. Transparency is visible. He goes first. He says everything that's fucked up about himself, his life, that he knew the other guy was going to try and use against him. How they, they jumped him. They beat his ass. They banged his girlfriend. They sold crack to his mom. When it came down to it, they had nothing left to say to him. Anything they had to spit at him was just going to not even be able to penetrate his armor. He became fucking bulletproof. Became unbeatable at that moment from being 
real, that's real authentic, authenticity and authentic and real transparency. If I just come out and say, listen, motherfucker, this is me. This is how I talk. This is how I think. And I don't give a fuck what you think. This is me. And I wave my maniac, maniacal freak fucking flag and I plant it in the ground. And I say, you know what? I was the poorest kid in school. I was a social outcast. I had zero fucking friends. I was a criminal. I was a fucking menace. I've been to jail dozens of times. I curse a lot, but guess what? I have a lot of experience, a lot of health and fitness and discipline and business experience. This is me. This is who I am. This is how I approach shit. This is how I teach shit. What could possibly be said or done to me to hurt me, to hurt my feelings? If I come right off, right out the gate, Right off the bat, and put all that shit, boom, on the table. Nothing anyone can ever say or do can have zero effect on me. Someone told me one time, if you want to be successful in this world, you're going to have to put yourself out there. And if you put yourself out there, you have to have thick fucking skin. And to be real transparent and really authentic, you need to have thick fucking skin. But you need to stop being a little bitch. Being authentic. That means credibility. Being legitimate, being trustworthy, fucking real. You've heard it all before. Think about uh, that you see it all the time on, on Facebook. It's just not represented. Oh, the word authenticity is just all the time thrown around. And, and it's bullshit. There's a there's a, a quote that said: if you trade your authenticity for safety. You may experience the following. Anxiety, depression, eating disorders, addiction, rage, blame, resentment, and inexplicable grief. I don't know where it's from. This is from some some article or something that that I I remember pulled up a while years ago. Think about it. You can't manufacture authenticity. It's it's forced all the time on the internet. People trying to manufacture authenticity. How could you manage? It's not think about it. You're manufacturing authenticity. Authenticity, impossible. You can manufacture adversity, make shit hard, choose hard. We've talked about that before, but you cannot manufacture fucking authenticity. How do you remain authentic? First of all, is be decisive and stick to your fucking decisions. Have an ethical code, have core values, have family core values. We have a, a, a freak family core values. Actually, I'll even read it for you. Fuck it. I'll read you. I'll, I'll just give you the bullet points. There's, there's, 12 of them. It's discipline, energy, attack, mind, body, mission, listen, create, win, confidence, protect, and freak. Those are our 12. And we call it the freak family code. Fuck it. I'll even read them for you. We're here. We're having a good old time here on a, a Tuesday night. I'm going to read them for you. Number one, discipline. I will maintain discipline as my foundation. Never make any excuses and stay in the green. If you don't know what that means, you need to get up to speed and figure out and know what stay in the green is. This is our freak family code. This is the freak family code, so it means something to us, even if it doesn't to you. Number two, energy. I will bring infectious energy and maximum effort to every situation, room, and interaction. Number three, attack. I wake up early every day. Take action, not waste time. Make shit happen and attack the day and all tasks. Number four, mind. I will strengthen my mind every day, reading, writing, meditating. Without a strong mind, a strong body is useless. Number five, body. I will build my body every day. That one's pretty fucking simple. Number six, mission. I will put the mission and the family before myself. Number seven, listen. I will shut the fuck up, listen first, then respond, not letting my emotions control me, considering all options I hear. Number eight, create. I will create, take risks, and make bold moves, contributing ways to make the family successful every day. Number nine, lesson. I will maintain a positive attitude in all situations, even if it was a fail, and always find the win or the lesson. Number 10, almost there, confidence. I will always think for myself and believe in myself and make decisions that seem right. Fucking simple. Number 11 of the Freak Family Code. Protect. I will defend and protect the safety of this family at all motherfucking costs. Number 12. Freak. 
I will be my freak self every day because I am fucking awesome. That is our freak family code. That is what transparency looks like. That is what authenticity looks like. And we live by this code every day. The whole family knows it. It is fa- with the way it's organized is fairly new. But again, it was discipline, energy, attack, mind, body, mission, listen, create, win, confidence, protect, and freak. That's what authenticity looks like. That's what living by an ethical code looks like. That's how you, you maintain, how you, you, you have authenticity is by living by a code similar to that. Never letting yourself become the poor little fucking victim. By apologizing when you're wrong or when you fucked up. By owning up to your decisions. Own up to your talking, to your fucking yapping in your words. Own up to your actions, especially your fucking mistakes. Never accept any excuses. Never make any excuses. Being positive all the time. No one ever can take away your thoughts and your positivity. Being a fucking leader. This is how you're, you, you become authentic. To me, that's what authenticity is. What I just read in that freak family code. That's fucking realness. That's authenticity. That's transparency. That's our approach to life. And we don't give a fuck if it offends someone. If it rubs someone the wrong way. Fuck it. Then get the fuck out. Go somewhere else. Don't tune in to the live videos. That's fine. Some people will hate, but most can relate. That's how it goes. You know it. Freak. It all comes down to being our freak selves, being role models, emulating the type of person that my kids want to become, the type of man that my son one day wants to become, the type of man that one day my daughter, if I was ever going to let her get married, would want to freaking marry. Being your freak, unique self. Living life on your own terms. Marching to the beat of your own fucking drum. Not giving a fuck what anyone thinks about you. All while having the humility and the courage to be polarizing. That's what it's about. Having influence. Being a freak that can find the bright side in everything. Can find the positive in every situation. Can make light of every situation. Can laugh in any fucking situation. Can make a joke out of anything. Make everyone laugh when shit's all fucked up. That's being a freak. That's being transparent. That's being authentic. Not crumbling under the fucking pressure. Not taking shit personal. Dealing with adversity and hardship by finding the positive and the fun in fucking everything. That's what real authenticity is. Not some motherfucker driving around in their rented fucking car, flashing in their last few hundred dollar bills. That ain't authentic. That's fake. That's a hypocrite. It's a fraud. Like, seriously. So... I read you this sick, twisted, demented story from a fourth grader. It just shows you. And I'm not mad at that. That's fine. Let them see that stuff. Let them open their minds to that stuff. That's why movies that I mentioned and the actors I mentioned, like think of it. Again, Howard Stern, Ice Cube, Ice T. The movie Ted is the one that stands out because it's just so fucking twisted. Like, think about it. If someone wrote that story, there there were people that were going to be haters that were like, that's the stupidest fucking thing I ever heard. But yet, then again, all these fucking million, million top, top level A-list actors came on board for this movie. After they saw the script, they read the script, and they agreed to take the part in this fucking movie. Because humans are fucking sick and twisted. So don't tell me, don't fucking tell me that I go overboard. Because guess what? Guess what, motherfucker? The way that I've been, even on this show, where I let loose a little on this show... Hasn't even been my true self. This has been me holding back. That's why when I when I go to the project, the project is me. It's like it's my zone of genius. It's my five percent that Bedros Kulian talks about, where I can literally be my real, authentic self, no holds barred, fucking wide open, transparent, and that's always the greatest fucking weeks of my life during the project. So. If you think that what you see now is over the top or too much, then brace yourselves, motherfucker, because it's only going to be notched, going up a notch, because that's what motherfuckers need. They need a fire lit under their ass. They need someone to be the one to call them out on their bullshit, to tell them how the fucking world really is, not some sugar-coated, yes ma'am bullshit. They need to hear the real shit in the fucking world. And if I have to be the one to take the heat, take the heat, for delivering it the way straight fucking forward, the way it needs to be delivered, I'll take the fucking heat because guess what? There's hard fucking skin here, motherfucker. It could take the arrows and the darts and the spit. It could take it. 
Some people will hate, but most can relate. If you have any questions, comments, put them down below. I would love to hear what you have to say about this topic. What are your thoughts on it? Put them down there. Make sure you like, comment, and share this video. I will talk to you later. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.